Okay, now most of what I'm going to be covering is would be uh, for one to two people, maybe up to three people, because that's what the majority of the people are doing now. And that's where your most, your smaller stoves work in that category. When you start cooking for your larger groups, the dynamics clean, change so much. Now, we go way back. This is the most simple stove we could have, the three stone fire, right there. There's probably more people cooking on the three stone fire today than any other method. With proper technique and skill, those people can cook almost as efficiently as someone cooking on a regular stove. That's been around since man started cooking. Now we'll go over some of the pots here, and then we'll go over some of the stoves. Probably the most simple, most basic pot ever created is the simple one quart mug, okay? From there we can go, these here would be date back to the 1700s, these were French pattern. If you notice they made a wider bottom than the top, the idea of that was to keep the flame in contact with the bottom of the pot longer. Here again, here's a neat feature on these. You had a cup that fit inside the pot and you had your bale handle. That way there allowed you to place it over the fire, next to the fire, use a stick to take it away from the fire. This would be like a one person size, which would be one liter or one quart. This would be a two person size, two quarts. Majority of pots that you found back in that area had a minimum of one quart or a little bit more per person. Because if you were cooking beans, rice, uh, food that wasn't concentrated, you needed that volume for that person to receive enough calories to continue on his chavais. Typical, this city also dates back to the 1700s. This would be another term, here we call it a corn boiler. It had an attached lid that was on a hinge, open and close, made normally out of tin. Once again, bale handle, and then a plain handle. This pot here is probably more people have seen little pots like this. This was made uh, very, very popular with the Boy Scouts. Came normally in the Boy Scout mess kit that I'm sure anyone that's over uh, 50 years old remembers. It actually was had a little bale handle, and it was about a three quarter, three quarters of a quart capacity. This is what we go here. This would be what you call a, a, in Australia they call the billy pot. Neat little features about it. It had a lid and cup for when you did your tea. The term they that fits right in the top, makes one small little package. There, how they use these, that's why there wasn't a bale handle, they would set this, as you can see the wide surface here, they would set this next to the fire, and that's how they would utilize that pot to be used. And that would date back to the 1800s, 1700s, 1800s. A lot of people talk about, you know, modern use of built-in windscreens, all this good stuff. Well, we go back, we look at this pot set right here, this is a Meta. This was developed by the Swiss back in the 1920s. It was actually manufactured to be utilized with a solid fuel tab. It incorporated a windscreen heat extender. And what it also had, which was very unique, this here could also be utilized as a double boiler. And you can see here the total setup, technology dating back to the 1920s. The idea of having the double boiler is that while you're cooking the item underneath, you could also be keeping your first content warm while the other item is cooking. This was actually issued to Swiss military. And this was designed to be utilized with a heat tab. As you can see, this would probably be utilized for uh, two to three people. You can see how compact of a package that this was made and was made out of aluminum. This would be almost a 90 year old technology. Another one that's very popular that people enjoy a great deal is what they, some people call a Kelly kettle, which is basically what you have. You have a spun aluminum, which you have a, a, your water is contained inside here, and then it's, you have an inner shell. So basically what it is is a water encased pot. Whereas you drop your fuel inside here, down into your burner, the heat comes up, it heats your water. As soon as it starts to boil your steam, you can take that off and pour that out. It can also be utilized, some people will put a small cross on here where they'll put your cooking pot on top and cook like that. 
It became real popular in Ireland. They actually, the idea of having a, a double walled pot dates back to the Chinese, and that was utilized probably since oh, the 14 to 1500s. But those are much uh, larger scale, wider units. But this is by far you know, known as the Kelly Kettle, but it is old technology that goes back to the 1600s. This here pot set is probably very well known. This is a Changia, probably the best, most widely used pot set with heat exchanger uh, in the world today. Like this unit here, I'll set it up here real quick. You've got your windscreen for your stove. You've got your windscreen heat exchanger for your pot. You have your Trangia alcohol burner that sits right down inside there. As you can see here, your air is coming in here being preheated. This is acting as your windscreen heat exchanger. Each time your pot goes down on here with a space of about three-eighths of an inch. These units are made so you use your fry pan as your lid. If you decide you want to use this as a fry pan, you flip your pot brackets open. Now that allows you to use it as a fry pan. The other thing what it allows you to do, you can take the larger pot and you can place that here and now you can cook for Larger group. Now this dates back to the 1920s. Uh, you can even now a small gas adapter that will place inside there. Used extensively in the far north in uh, Scandinavian countries just because of the efficiencies. You have uh, great efficiency with a low amount of fuel because your flame and your cooking surfaces are protected from the environment. All stoves will profit from using a windscreen. Uh, there's a lot of discussion and debate, and people will say, well, you know, my stove is so good, I don't need a windscreen. You may not need a windscreen, but it means that you have the opportunity to burn a lot, whole lot more fuel because you don't have one. Now, on your gas burners, it's not quite so bad because you can just increase your BTUs. You will see your degradation of uh, 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 cooking ability on your lower BTU fuels because you just don't have the output with them. So I would say there's no stove that you don't profit by the use of a windscreen. Guaranteeing the transfer of your heat source to your pot, thus to the content that you're cooking. 